The Naked Wild Magic Barbarian is one of the best builds in Baldur's Gate 3. Well, that's if you consider best as unexpected, or occasionally frustrating, and honestly, just fun. Now, we're not really naked, we just don't have any armor on. And you can certainly use armor if you like, because this build is really flexible for many of the choices, and a lot of this will depend how far along in the game you are, and which late game rare or legendary items you might have access to. If you're feeling a little prude about the whole no armor thing, well, this class has 20 armor class and unbuffed 161 hit points. Definitely enough to stand on the front line and tank a lot of damage for your party. So what does a wild magic barbarian get? Well, it gets everything that a regular barbarian does, like the unarmored defense, which we're clearly taking advantage of in this video. Danger sense, which is a really strong passive, granting you advantage on dexterity saving throws against traps, spells, and surfaces. There's also reckless attack, which gives you advantage on your attack rolls, while also granting the same to enemies. But keep in mind, when we select the subclass Wild Magic, we'll actually become resistant to physical damage, so this is a rather favorable trade for us in most situations. Finally, Reckless Attack can be used after the original attack roll is made, as a reaction of sorts, allowing you to reserve it unless you absolutely think it's needed. Like most classes, you'll gain feats at level 4, 8, and 12. The choices for these will vary depending on what items you found in game and whether main stats like strength, constitution, or dexterity have been boosted by items or some of the other methods in game. I really love taking Great Weapon Master with this build because you can negate the penalty in a way with Reckless Attack, just allowing you an additional 10 damage per swing. And as you've seen in this clip, their character really doesn't miss that often at high level. Additionally to that, the other factor of Great Weapon Master is that you can get an extra attack for killing or landing a critical hit on an enemy, just allowing you an additional attack as well. And this class does not get a second extra attack like say a fighter would. Let's skip ahead a bit just to cover all these surges that you see popping up on the screen. Now we'll come back to cover some more of the abilities. What you're seeing is Unstable Backlash. It's a level 10 feature for the subclass Wild Magic. And while enraged, if you take damage or fail a saving throw, you trigger another Wild Magic effect that replaces the current one. This just adds to the chaos or lunacy of the build. Here we have the Surge for Bolt of Light. This is a 9 meter range, fairly low damage blind. The best part of most Surges is that they work as a bonus action, and since we're relying mainly on our two-hander to deal solid damage with our action, our bonus action is often free for the Surge, or potentially, we could poison our weapon as well with that bonus action. However, if we have the Great Weapon Fighting feat, then we need to manage whether or not our bonus action will actually be available because the additional attack from killing or even critting an enemy is a, typically a much better value than what we get from the Surge, especially at higher levels. At level 5, you'll gain an extra attack. And again, this is the only one that you'll get. On top of that, you'll get increased movement if you're not wearing heavy armor. At level 6, you'll pick up Bolstering Magic Boon. This grants you or an ally 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and ability checks. This also makes it great in or out of combat. This will also stack with a Guidance Cantrip. You may have seen me recommend that in many other guides as well. Together, these will make a large impact in the dialogues that you have throughout the game. Still at level 6, we'll also get the ability to restore spell slots for both a level 1 and a level 2 spell. Additionally, at level 9, we can then restore a level 3 spell. These make the Wild Magic Barbarian a great support for another spellcaster in your party that can take advantage of these extra spell slots. Level 7 brings Feral Instinct, which is amazing. Plus 3 to initiative, and you can no longer be surprised. This is very comparable to the Alert feat, which makes up in a way for not getting an extra feat like, say, the Fighter does. Level 9 brings Brutal Critical, which will allow you to do additional damage when you roll a critical hit. Level 11, Relentless Rage. Once per short rest, if you drop to 0 hit points while in Rage, you regain 1 hit point instead of being downed. This is handy especially being on the front lines with this character all the time. Along with the additional feats we'll gain at levels 4, 8, and 12 that I mentioned before, we'll also gain additional rage charges. You'll gain one of these at level 3, another one at level 6, as well as level 12. And this will be plenty for you in order to get enough rages off for the battles that matter in between rests. So let's go ahead and build the Barbarian out now. Obviously take the Barbarian class at level 1, that'll give us the access to Rage, which will turn into the Wild Magic Rage as we get the subclass. We'll also gain Unarmored Defense right at level 1, we get to add our Constitution modifier to our Armor class. And because of that, when we select our Ability Scores, we're going to dump 3 stats, and we're going to build up our Strength, Dexterity, and Con. Dexterity is still valuable to us because of Initiative. Initiative is very strong in this game. 
It's okay to have the two odd numbers here as well, because we'll boost this with the ability improvement feat when we get it, making both of these even numbers as soon as we hit level four. For proficiencies, you have a very limited option here. Select whichever two benefit you or your party the most. Level two, we simply just hit accept. This is danger sense and reckless attack, which we've talked about earlier. Level three, we'll gain an additional rage charge as well as the wild magic rage that we talked about. You can now begin using that as a bonus action, allowing you to still attack on the same turn. Level four, we get our first feat. I would definitely recommend ability improvement. This will allow us to bump our strength and dexterity up to even numbers. Now, if you're using some of the equipment that you find in game to boost your statistics, you may have different ability scores and find another feat more useful. I would hold off on Great Weapon Master for now until you have a higher chance to hit and can make use of Reckless Attack without as much danger to your character. Level five, again, just a couple of passives here. We'll get an extra attack as well as fast movement, giving us essentially double the damage in a turn as well as being able to move three extra meters. Level six, we'll gain the bolstering magic, the boon as well as the level one and two replenish spell slots, very handy for the character or other characters in the party. Level seven, another passive with Feral Insect, we gain a plus three bonus to initiative and we can't be surprised. Level eight, we'll gain another feat. And again, if you're following this guide or don't have any of that late game equipment, I would recommend boosting your strength up to 20 at this point. Level nine, we gain brutal critical, allowing us to do more damage on critical as well as the level three spell stop restoration. Again, handy for other characters in the party that make use of spells. Level 10 is when we gain the unstable backlash, which you saw used a lot of times during the gameplay. And keep in mind that you don't have to use this. You can choose to just do no action on it and allow you to maintain whichever one you currently have active. Level 11 is the Relentless Rage. When you get taken down to zero hit points, you'll regain one hit point, just allowing you to soak up another action from the enemies or potentially more than that if you're able to cause a miss or heal yourself up and so forth. Level 12, we'll get the third feat. And I would recommend Great Weapon Master at this point. This does a lot of additional damage with Reckless Attack. You will really be able to offset the penalty on the chance to hit. And at this point in the game, you'll also have a lot of equipment giving you bonuses and modifiers as well, which will also offset that penalty as well. And overall, this character retains a high chance to hit, even with this feat, and this just allows you to do far more damage. As mentioned before, this build doesn't require any specific pieces. In fact, it's really flexible with the gear setup you can use. However, I thought I'd show some of the pieces that I'm using with my character, just to give you some ideas as well. I really like Horns of the Berserker in the setup. You get plus two bonus to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage. This has a lot of benefit as you get later in the game, and most everything takes more than one hit to kill. Bloodthirst. Unarmed and melee attacks will deal an extra two necrotic damage as long as you don't have full health. This is great because this character is always in the front line, meaning that you typically don't have full health. If you don't deal any damage this turn, you'll suffer one to four necrotic damage at the end of your turn. This is basically just an additional negative effect that will occur to you if you are already enraged. So it just kind of reinforces the fact that you need to hit something and deal damage each turn. I also like Cloak of Protection for the additional armor class. Although this character can get up to 20 armor class, as I've shown you in the video, it's important to make sure that you have enough survivability because even if you have 300 hit points, if you get hit every single turn for full damage, you'll go down towards the end of the game. Now I'm using Enraging Heart Garb and I wanna make mention here that I'm also have the Amulet of Greater Health here. I know that this does not stack. I'm just using these to show examples of what can benefit for this particular character or similar builds. So the Enraging Heart Garb, while you're raging, the wearer generates two turns of wrath. This is just a way to deal additional damage. It's clothing as well, so you'll still gain those unarmored defense bonuses. And along that, you also get constitution plus two up to 20, again, adding additional synergy to this build. Now the amulet I just showed you is a late game item, and this is gonna set your constitution score to 23, which means that you could totally dump your constitution in the character creation if you knew you were giving this item to this character, and then you get a lot of benefit out of this. For gloves, I run the Dark Justicier Gauntlets. These allow you to deal one to four extra necrotic damage on your weapon attacks. Very beneficial, you get two attacks, so you get to kind of double dip in this. Alternatively, you could use the Gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength if you acquire them, which would set your strength to 23 as well. However, I find this character gets decent benefit out of this, and you can actually put those Gauntlets on other characters that benefit a little bit more, if that makes sense. So I kind of like to spread the gear around and so forth. So that's why I went with the option to show this here, is just because so if you're going to dump your constitution, you have plenty of stat points to get to 20. 
potentially even 20 to 2 if you're using some of the other methods in game to boost your strength and so forth. So it shouldn't really be an issue of pushing yourself up to the 23. For the boots, I wanted to use an example that would serve as a friendly reminder. Whenever you equip a piece of armor, if you want to take advantage of those unarmored passives that you have, make sure that whether it's a helm, chest piece, gloves, or boots, that it is not light, medium, or heavy armor. If you look at the bottom of these greaves, this is in fact medium armor. So as nice as these would be for this character, and even though they can equip it, just to gain long strider here, I'd actually be tanking my AC and you'll see that it's down to 14. If I equip a pair of boots, which do not have any armor noted at the bottom of them, like line breaker boots, which will allow me to gain wrath when dashing, that'll substantially increase my armor because I can now take advantage of those feats. And if we're truly gonna play the naked wild magic barbarian, well, we wanna stick to the theme. Baldurin's great giant slayer, excuse me, is just a fantastic two-handed weapon. Arguably the best weapon in the game in that regard for two-handers. On a hit, you're going to double the damage from your strength modifier. Again, you should be able to push the strength of this build up to 22 if you're completely min-maxing this. So you get even more benefit out of that. On top of that, it's a plus three weapon enchantment with a giant form. Now for rings, you basically anything that's going to add additional damage. I've got the caustic band here to deal an additional two acid damage on hit. The other ring and my bow are really just fillers for this particular demonstration that I did for the build guide. However, you could use anything that's going to give you additional movement speed, like say Crusher's ring for the second ring. For ranged weapon, you do want to make sure that you have a re reliable chance to hit with a ranged weapon because we want to make sure that we're dealing damage each turn to retain that enraged effect. So make sure that you have something that gives you a good chance to hit or is reliable enough to at least kind of make it somewhat of an option to keep that rage going. However, as you get further in the game, you'll have a lot of rage charges and you really won't have to worry about running out. And as I've said before, the bonus actions aren't really something we're starved for with this particular build. It's nice to have that bonus action available when you kill or critically hit a creature so that you can make an additional attack from the great weapon feat. However, in general, in more turns than not, you're probably not gonna use your bonus action at all. So you do have some freedom there. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.